guys, welcome back to my channel. So today is part two of my little products that are leaving my collection final reviews kind of series. <laughs> today, as I say, is part two. So I'm doing base products, but not foundations. If you missed my first video, it was just foundations. I'd highly encourage you to go and watch that video as well because I do talk about like my thoughts around decluttering and my sort of stance at the moment on receiving PR and purchasing and things so I do kind of touch on that a little bit in that video. So I will link that up in the little info card as well as in the description for you. But yeah today we're talking concealers, powders, setting sprays, primers that I am no longer keeping in my collection and I want to give you guys like my final thoughts and reviews on them before they go from this house. <laughs> so we'll start out with a setting spray. I actually don't have too many setting sprays in my collection. I think I'm only left with two because I've been doing very good at like working my way through them and not buying or like receiving new ones. So the first product that I'm going to gift to a friend because it's still got quite a bit of product in it and it's a very bougie product I'm sure she will love. Um, it's the Tarcha Luminous Dewy Skin Mist. I did get sent this and I was very thankful to be able to try it because it's a very culty kind of product. I never splurged on it myself because I wasn't sure if it would work for my skin type. Long story short, it really doesn't. It's way too dewy and way too oily for me. I mean, I love a dewy finish as you can tell, but I do have oily skin and I find that it just does tend to break my makeup down and make it look quite oily. Even though I think it's very beautiful, I'm gonna pass that one on. I also didn't really like the bottle. It's kind of got a very short, severe spritz to it. Like, it's just kind of like psh. I love sprayers that have a really nice long kind of trigger action. So it's like psh because I feel like you can get more of your face. This you have to use like so many sprays. Um, so I don't love that about it, but the packaging does look very beautiful. But as I say, I'm gonna pass that one on. I've decided to move this one on out of my collection. It's the Maybelline Master Prime Hydrating Primer. And this was actually one of my favorite products for a long time, but I recently, or last year, I tried the Flower Beauty Hydrating Primer and I think I like that one better. So I decided I didn't need to keep both. This one's also very old. So I figured that that one can move on out. Just also because I don't tend to use hydrating primers that often, I typically reach for like my Hourglass Fail Mineral Primer like 80% of the time. So other primers do tend to get a little bit neglected. Like this one, this is another moisturizing kind of hydrating primer. It's the Smashbox Photo Finish Primerizer. I had this plus two little travel sizes. Um, and I just don't use it enough and there's still quite a lot in there that I think my friend will love and will actually use up and appreciate. So I'm gonna pass the full size onto her and I have kept just a couple of the little travel sizes just to use if I so fancy trying it again. I'm moving this one on out. It's the Marinesse Collagen Cushion Custom Color Tone Correcting Primer. This is just very old and very used up. It looks really gross in the pan. I mean, it's not a very aesthetically pleasing product to look at, but it is a very good color correcting primer. I just don't find myself using it much these days either. Well, I haven't used it in a long time because it looked quite rank, to be honest. But also I don't really love Marinesse as a brand, so I wouldn't repurchase it. But that particular product is actually quite good. I'm also gonna move this one out, which is quite a new product to me, but it just didn't work for what I wanted it for. It's the Innisfree Smart Drawing Color Correcting concealer. This is in the shade 03 Lavender. This I thought would be a great little mixer with foundations to make them a little bit more cool toned. It's something I love doing, mixing a lavender kind of shade in. But this one I just didn't actually like the formula of. It's got like a cute little brush that you can just like brush on your face. So I loved the packaging. But I just found it made my foundations break down really fast. So it wasn't actually a very good mixing product. I'm also going to pass on this to a friend. It's the Smashbox 24 hour Photo Finish Shadow Primer. I've hardly used this. I found it worked fine, but I don't use eye primer that often anyway. And I still have two in my collection even after my decluttering. So I'm gonna give that one to a friend because it's still so, like there's so much in it and it's not that old. I'm also getting rid of the Essence Eye Primer. This is the eyeshadow bad. This really should be in the eye category, but I don't know, it's a primer. <laughs> Um, again, for the same reason, I have too many eye primers and I don't use them often enough to need them and that one is very old, so it's time to go. I'm gonna get rid of this, very sadly, but I can do a back to MAC for it. I'll empty a container out. It's the MAC Pro Longwear Concealer. Whenever I'd reach for this and use it, I actually really enjoyed it. I'd quite often use it underneath foundation as like a correcting kind of concealer because the shade NW15 is a little bit too deep to use on the outside, <laughs> like on top of my foundation. But I think it's a fantastic formula. This used to be like the cult favorite concealer everyone used before like 
oh, I don't know, it probably was like six years ago. It was like everyone's favorite. I bought this particular bottle probably about four or five years ago and it has definitely expired. Like it smells a bit funky now, which is very sad. So I'm going to back to Mac that one. If you don't know what back to Mac is, basically you can take back six empty Mac containers. So I'll like empty that out and you get a free lipstick. And I've got quite a lot of empty Mac products stored up. So time for some free lippy. I'm going to pass this on, which is a shame because it's something that I got in 2019. It's the Alpha. 16 hour camo concealer this was in like everyone's favorites people loved it I just didn't get on board with this one as much I thought the L'Oreal infallible concealer was much better and that's been kind of touted as being like a similar kind of product I thought it offered better coverage than this one although I do have a shade that I think is a bit too light for me which does mean that the coverage probably was affected because of that I've got the shade fair beige and yeah I just found it way too light I don't really like that kind of Kim Kardashian style like highlighted under eye. If you love that then these shades are awesome because if you're near my skin tone this will actually highlight the under eye but I prefer a concealer that's either matches my skin tone or perhaps is even a little bit darker because then I find it just conceals better. And they are coming out with a hydrating formula which sounds really nice and I think if I got that I'd probably go for a slightly darker shade and I think that would work really well. On that note though I am actually getting rid of a L'Oreal infallible concealer but this is just because this is not the right shade it's the shade 322 ivory it's a little bit too yellow toned I love the shade fawn it has a wee bit more pink to it and it works really well for me so it's like my ultimate favorite concealer from last year it's just that that isn't the right shade so I'd rather not hold on to it I am passing this on this is the revolution conceal and define concealer in the shade C1. I thought that this was a pretty good concealer but nothing like extraordinary um, and it also does smell a bit like it's going off so I feel like I can move that one on. Had it for a while. I'm gonna get rid of this as well. It's the Revolution Matte Base Concealer. Um, I picked this up just on a whim while I was over in the UK just because I was at Superdrug I think it was and was like "Ooh, I haven't seen that before. I should have known that no one talks about this and for good reason. It's not that great. It says it's a full coverage concealer. I would disagree. I don't know there's just something about it where it was just it didn't work very well so didn't like that one. And this I just don't really use. It's the Maybelline Master Camo Concealer in like the green shade. It's really good for correcting if you have like redness or breakouts. I'm very lucky at the moment my skin is very breakout free which is awesome, so I'm just not really using this sort of thing. I didn't even really use it much when I had breakouts either. I found just using a full coverage concealer was enough, um, but if you do suffer with very severe redness, something like that can be good. Oh, I have another primer I forgot to mention. This is the L'Oreal Base Magique Primer. I don't know, I accidentally ripped the label off. <laughs> this is actually a really nice primer. I used to like love this back in the day, but I think the Elf Paulus Party Primer is very similar and I prefer it, so I don't need both. I'm also gonna pass this on, the RMCA No Color Powder. I just don't really reach this kind of powder anymore, this kind of silica powder. Hardly ever reach for something like this. I do have a very small Derma Blend powder that I've kept. It's just a very small amount, so if for some reason I want one of these sort of transparent powders, I can go for that, but I don't use a lot of powder anyway. I'm gonna pass on this. This is the Pony Effects. Um, the name's written in Korean, but I think it's like their powder foundation essentially. It's in the shade Fair. This is actually one of the best, I think, powder foundations I've tried. It's really nice and silky and smooth. Um, it's a beautiful formula. I just do not wear powder foundation at all. And the color of this as well is a little bit too yellow toned. I think if it was a little bit of a better match for my skin tone, if it had a little bit more pink to it, I think I would have kept it because it is a beautiful formula. It comes with a really nice puff as well. So the actual product is beautiful. So if you are quite fair and you've got a little bit more of a neutral to warm undertone, I actually would recommend this. It's a nice product. I've got quite a few powders that I'm getting rid of because I just don't use it enough and I had so many. Uh, the next one is by L'Oreal. It's their Inf Infailable again. Why do they spell it like that? <laughs> Infailable magic loose powder. I did some work for L'Oreal in late 2019. I did a couple of get ready with me's for their YouTube channel. So they sent me like literally a whole face worth of L'Oreal products. I loved a couple of them, like the Infallible Concealer, absolutely adore that product. But like quite a few of them were things that either I've tried in the past and thought were like so-so or just things that I wasn't interested. This was one of those products that I thought, yeah, it works fine does a nice job but isn't necessarily something that I typically use on a daily basis. It is like that RCMA powder where it's very finely milled kind of HD powder but this one does have a slight kind of blue tinge to it that's meant to like brighten. It's nice enough but not something I 
need in my collection. And then finally, I'm moving on out to this. This is the Savvy Mineral Loose Powder. I think there are some real gems in the Savvy line. Savvy is a Australian brand. It's very affordable price line. There are a couple of really great products in there, but then there are also some really tragic products. This is one that I just didn't think worked. I hoped it would be a dupe for the Models Prefer Mineral Finishing Veil because it's literally called a Mineral Loose Powder Finishing Veil, but it is just not very good. It doesn't actually set your makeup like at all and I just didn't like the finish on the skin as much so that was a bit of a disappointment. So that is it for my final reviews on these products that I'm moving out of my collection. If you enjoyed this kind of video and you want to see more of these kind of like final reviews, they're very sort of similar to my empties reviews videos but they're not empty, then do leave me a comment below letting me know and give this video a thumbs up too. That really helps me to know if you're enjoying this content. If you want to go and see some recent blog posts then definitely check out lifebyanaelaine.com and if you want to interact with me throughout the week in between my videos then definitely go over to my socials. I have Instagram, Facebook, Twitter and Pinterest and until my next video I hope you guys have a wonderful couple of days and I'll talk to you then. Bye!